Okay, let's go ahead and get started. I think I know that there's a few people who are running late tonight, but um, we're recording also so they can always go back and see afterwards if they want to if they miss anything. But I don't want to keep you guys sitting on here waiting for too, too long. So all right, I'm going to start with introducing Marcella, Marcella Colavecchio. She is here with us, and this is her artist talk for her solo show, Censored, at Roaring Artist Gallery, and we are so excited by the um, feedback that we have had so far from the show. Marcella, I hope you've had half the awesome feedback that I have, because it's been really, really great. So... Um, I'm gonna read Marcella's bio real quick and then I'm gonna hand it over to her and she's gonna share her screen and then um, that, well, first let me get it to where she can share her screen actually. And, okay, I'll figure that out in just a second. All right, Marcella's bio. Marcella Colavecchio is an Austin-based artist known for her vibrant enthusiasm for color, which is manifested in her figurative work. Marcella inserts herself in art historical iconographies that have fascinated her since childhood and which, due to her biological sex, hold conflicting connotations of ostracism and admiration. By recreating these in her own image, she removes the barriers to her inclusion. In doing so, she is able to explore gender roles and how it has been shared by patriarchal, societal, and cultural ideas of femininity. Born in Stamford, Connecticut, Marcella studied at Lyme Academy of Fine Art and has worked in technology, writing, and consulting before moving to Austin in 2018 to pursue her own art practice. Marcella's interest in art began in childhood, inspired by her artist father, whose artistic ability was not encouraged in post-World War II Italy. Consequently, her perception of art is defined by the belief that it must transform and challenge both herself and society. So I am excited for you all to see how she is doing exactly that in this show. So Marcella, I am going to hand it over to you and um, see if you can screen share. If you can't, I will see what I need to do to fix that. But um, take it away. Yeah. Hey, everybody. <laughs> um, this is my first artist talk. So I really appreciate you guys coming and, and hearing what I have to say about the show. I really appreciate you taking the time to even look at the at the show and taking a tour and enjoying the work. Um, so let me try to screen share. Oh, I can. No problems there. Awesome. Can you all see my screen? Thumbs up. Cool. <laughs> awesome. Uh, let me know if, if there's any issues on your end. Um, but yeah, um, so I wanted to um, put together the show with all the works that I created in 2020. Um, 2020 was a very busy year for me, despite the pandemic, um, I was really able to sort of find my craft and uh, really concentrate on the message that I'm sending with my paintings. Um, so I wanted to start off here on this side of the exhibition, um, which I think is just as important as all the other sides. Um, this is my daily practice work. Um, and this work is called Thresholds. Uh, and this is where I can actually um, go in and really practice my color uh, theory and really practice um, which colors I'm choosing for my palettes. Um, so usually every day I'm trying to experiment with the colors that I'm choosing and trying to create this harmony where um, it's really interesting to the viewer um, and they're able to sort of grasp the message, but really sort of be enveloped in, in the color and the harmony in the paintings. Um, so every day I try to um, paint something, whether it's big or small, um, and really sort of hone in on the color theory aspect of my work. Um, so thresholds is really a sort of uh, taking a step back and um, really understanding, you know, how I can minimize the amount of colors that I'm using to still, um, you know, depict this, this composition in this image. Um, so I'm really using only maybe maximum like four colors to really give you the same sort of uh, depth and emotion that I'm trying to portray with the, um, with the human body and with the composition. Um, so these are actually just daily practice paintings for me and they're just as important as any of my larger scale works um, because they really help me get to the point where I'm very confident in my color palette and which which colors I actually want to use um, to to in in larger pieces or in pieces that are more intricate. Um, so I 
definitely wanted to leave some room there to um, maybe even just have talk through some questions that you guys might have about my color palettes. Um, I get asked about color quite a bit. So this is the time to really, you know, ask me because this is really the work that that helps me pick that kind of stuff out. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. <laughs> Well, if you think of anything, just feel free to, to unmute. I'm happy to, to talk about the process a little bit more with you guys. Awesome. Uh, let me go in. Let's take a look over here. So on this side of the work, um, so a lot of what I like to do um, with my work is to really show the, um, the push and pull of the messaging that women receive you know, either from, uh, you know, media outlets or whether it's cu cultural or whether it's, you know, you're hearing it from, you know, friends or family. Um, a lot of times I find that uh, women uh, receive this messaging that is like duplicative. So we're hearing messaging like you're showing too much skin. Oh, why are you such a prude? You know, so you hear these kinds of things and they're really mixed messaging. Um, so a lot of my titles and a lot of my work from last year was really to um, sort of showcase that kind of messaging that we receive all the time and um, sort of show the the opposite end of it and how we're actually we can actually take power over those statements and and really sort of um, show our individuality, show our strength and use it as a powerful tool where we're instead of it showing as a negative. Um, so this painting uh, is just showing too much skin. Um, is is sort of a homage to that and showing that, you know, we can show as much skin as we want. You know, we are, you know, if you're confident in your body and you have lots of body positivity, um, you can show as much as you want. So um, the color palette that I chose for this, um, I try to use a lot of cinematic color palettes. I really love using color gels um, in my process and, um, you know, lighting my models. Uh, a lot of the modeling that I did in 2020 was of myself, um, which really adds an extra layer onto it as, um, you know, I'm the artist and also the subject of my work. So it's much more personal um, as someone who, you know, grew up feeling not so body positive, um, you know, feeling overweight or feeling inadequate. You know, this work is really sort of um, much more personal to me um, and I find that, you know, a lot of women seem to also have these same experiences. So it's, it's really nice to connect with other women who have also experienced some things like this or heard any sort of like, you know, negative body connotations like as they were growing up. So yeah. Cool. Oh. Still not good at these controls. <laughs> Bear with me. <laughs> Cool. So a lot of these, um, you'll see that a lot of the titles kind of sort of um, really touch on that um, sort of duplicate messaging, like you've let yourself go. Um, this is something that a lot of women hear, like when they're, you know, older, they have children. Um, it's something that I've heard a lot of women have to face um, in just listening to this kind of rhetoric that's, you know, um, said to them on a day to day. Um, it's definitely not easy. Um, and it's also just, you know, wanted to sort of show this um, figure, like, sort of hiding herself because of this kind of rhetoric. Um, this is one of those things that, um, you know, is, is really prevalent in my work. And this is actually an image where I'm sort of uh, being much more vulnerable to these types of, um, to these types of statements. Um, so a lot of my poses, I choose to really sort of show the power of women. This is one where I'm actually sort of being a little bit more vulnerable um, in the pose and being a little bit more constricted. Same with this, um, leave something to the imagination. That's another um, title that I wanted to play with, showing a little bit less skin, um, kind of touching on that kind of verbiage that we've, or at least I've often heard <laughs> growing up. And then don't be so provocative. Another uh, sort of thing that you you'd kind of hear back and forth. You know, I I grew up in a in a very strict European family, so you always had to dress very conservative, um, not be too provocative, don't show your shoulders, kind of thing. So those are all statements that I've heard growing up, um, and so I've wanted to really sort of capture that in these three images. 
Ooh, ooh. All right. So this painting, I know it's one of Katie's favorites. <laughs> Will I ever be enough? Um, so I think that um, the title is really sort of self-explanatory. It's, it's one of those titles where it's like, you know, you're always questioning who you are. Um, society always makes you feel like you have to be different or have to fit a certain ideal and will it ever be enough? Um, so it's really sort of an open-ended question, um, you know, and trying to figure out who you are. Um, I spent a lot of time figuring out who I, who I am and I'm still sort of figuring it out. Um, it took me a very long time to find my voice in art. So I feel like this is really, sort of one of the the most important pieces out of the the series that I created last year because it sort of asks that question of everyone you know do you feel like you're where you want to be are you really who you are or who you want to be in this world um and what will it take for you to get there um so yeah <laughs> cool if you all have any questions feel free to stop me <laughs> I have a question real quick Sweet. So some of these <laughs> seem like more like photographic and like very true to real life form, but then some mm -hmm. of them, it, it's very clear that you've played with the form and it's not as accurate and a little more surreal. Like, sure. can you say something about um, why you chose to, to go towards that more surreal, uh, like at times and then other times not? Sure. Yeah. Um, I can see like, for instance, uh, you're too skinny is a little bit more realistic. Um, I think it really has to do with the color harmony. Um, I really tend to lean more towards sur surrealistic color um, just because I find color and, and lighting so fascinating. Um, you know, as an artist, I'm always trying to learn different things. And um, realism is um, extremely challenging. You know, as a, as a figurative artist, it's very hard to mix proper skin tones. You know, if you have one color that's just slightly more, you know, um, you know brighter, you can really ruin the palette. So I, I really try to, you know, both use surrealism as a way of um, sort of honing in on, on color harmony and the color palette. But that still doesn't mean that I'm always going to paint that way. Like I still do need to practice, you know, realistic uh, skin tones. And that's just part of, you know, the practice of being an artist. Um, I'm always gonna try something different um, to see what will engage you know, the audience uh, and how it will help them sort of um, sort of gauge the message that I'm trying to, to portray. So yeah, does that answer your question? <laughs> so I was actually uh, asking a little bit more about form than color, though I did oh, appreciate form. what you had to say. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Because like in the smaller ones, uh, it seems a little bit more blocky. There's pieces that appear to be kind of like cut out or whatnot, especially around like genitals or whatnot. Whereas mm -hmm. like these two, they look like women, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So but you're, like you're that talking bottom about one of the, yeah. Like this one here. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's the, honestly, it's the, the pose that's a bit more exaggerated. Um, I usually paint from reference. So I do paint from photo reference. I do take photos of all of my models and then go in and, and try to figure out like what colors I want to use and how I want to, you know, portray this body. Um, mm -hmm. So for smaller pieces, you know, it, it's funny. I'm, I'm an artist that's used to um, painting like big mural size pieces. So when I condense my work to being very small, it's sometimes very difficult for me um, as someone who's so used to using a two inch brush to go yeah. back down and to use a tiny little detail brush. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's also, you know, I guess that is also part of the practice. Like sometimes it does look a little bit more blocky and that's because like sometimes I don't have the same brush control as I do when I do um, larger pieces. Um, so I've really been sort of challenging myself this year, especially to paint on smaller scale. Um, I bought like purposely bought like a bunch of tiny canvases just so I can, I can try to paint uh, on them more often rather than just going, you know, only big. <laughs> No, no, I, I, I totally get it. And I love oh. these smaller works that you did. I think that they're amazing and wonderfully successful. Yeah. Um, 
And I like that, like the shoulders are larger and then the hips mm-hmm. are practically non-existent and that you've like played with that form in a way that's kind of surreal. I think it mm-hmm. even like underscores the message even more. Um, and I've seen just having watched your work for a while that you're doing that more and more often lately. Yeah. <laughs> so, so um, and I like it. I like that. And I was just kind of wondering like, what inspired you to go in that direction, right? Yeah. And I can see how like just moving to, so I like large too. I like large quite a bit and it's it's hard <laughs> moving down to small again. It really is. It's such a, it's such a change in mindset. And I'm, I'm trying to right now in my practice, uh, paint a small canvas and a big canvas at the same time. Uh, so wow. like, right, like right behind me, I have a small canvas and then right next to it, I have a very large canvas. Um, and I'm working on on both compositions at the same time to sort of help me, um, you know, continue to to grow my skills in that way. Yeah. Well, thank you for answering my question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> cool. That was a very interesting question too, because I got a lot of feedback. Um, you are too skinny and you are too fat are two pieces that were in our very first show. They were jury mm-hmm. by Danae actually. In into our very first show, the Heroes War show. And I had a couple of people who thought they were photographs. Really? <laughs> That's so, an awesome compliment. I, I thought that was really interesting too. But yeah, mm-hmm. I'm like, she's just that good. They're yeah. <laughs> it's it's funny because when I um I, I had a couple of years at Lyme and at Lyme I studied uh, human anatomy. So I didn't study painting uh, in art school. Um, I learned how to paint on my own and I never thought that I would be able to achieve, uh, realistic skin tones, learning it on my own. Um, and I think that's just, it was just sort of a, an ego thing. You know, I was like, I'm, I'm not in art school. I'm never going to be able to be that good, you know? Um, and that was just my young brain telling me that, but, um, you know, as long as I'm, I'm able to practice it, I know that I can do it. <laughs> it's just that I think I, I really much more enjoy the idea of creating my own skin tones and creating that sort of aspect to it because it's really uniquely me. You know, I feel like, you know, if you go to art school and you learn how to do realistic skin tones, like so many people know how to do that. Um, what can I do that's different that will set my work apart, but still be able to help the message come through. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So you're too fat and you're too skinny. Um, this is like a really, um, close and personal couple of pieces for me because, um, I spent most of my life, uh, battling, uh, body, sort of like negative body image. Um, you know, when I was younger, I was overweight. Um, and I was told constantly that I was too fat, even by family members, you know, European families are like, you know, very strict on like what you eat. Um, and even just like the people that were around me in my life. So I got to a point where, you know, I was going to the gym twice a day. Um, you know, I got down to, you know, I lost like 70 pounds. I was very insecure. Um, even when I was much thinner and felt like, you know, I was much more um, idealistic and had a more ideal body. Um, So these two paintings really represent the struggle that I went through all those years and still go through, you know, when you, when you feel constantly um, unsure about whether or not your body is like a societal norm, you know, you're always in, in sort of this, this constant struggle. Um, so these two really represent that struggle for me. Um, and I, I do these things in the mirror all the time, like the, the pose in, in You're Too Skinny, I do this in, in the mirror all the time. So I wanted to capture that, you know, sort of vulnerability that I have with, with my body and that I continue to struggle through it just like, you know, any other woman. Cool. These three we are some of my favorites. My, my partner, Dan, is on this Zoom call and he is this lucky model. <laughs> um, so yes, yeah, so men can't help themselves. Uh, this was um, a painting that I wanted to create, uh, a triptych that I wanted to create um, that responds to uh, rape culture and um, the idea that men really just can't help themselves and that we need to tailor ourselves around um, the way that men perceive women. Um, And that is a very difficult 
thing for us to to overcome. Um, but I wanted to sort of paint this uh, powerful image of a woman being bold and being able to be her full self um, while men are actually um, you know, respecting that and understanding that they don't need to act upon, you know, whatever instincts or whatever, you know, is okay in, in society or that whatever men feel like is okay. Um, so, you know, that was the, the real inspiration behind these, um, these three separate images. And I'm also trying to, at this point, when I was just trying to paint these individual subjects on these canvases, I wanted to figure out a way where they could interact um, so it was important for me to include all three of these primary colors in each one of these paintings so that they all connect with one another. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. I have a question real quick, just because sure. I'm mouth and nosy. Um, I've seen these three paintings hung a couple different ways mm -hmm. before. Who decided to hang them this way? Um, so this was, this was my original way. Okay, I love this. This is amazing. It's my Thank favorite you. out of all the ways that I've seen it hung. <laughs> I was just being nosy. That's it. No, no, no worries. <laughs> awesome. Cool. And now we're going to go down the rainbow hallway. Woo. <laughs> I, um, I like to spin through this hallway. It's super fun. <laughs> There I go spinning again. I can't seem to get out of it. There we go. <laughs> awesome, cool. So I wanted to create this awesome fun hallway um, to go down that was colorful and Katie and I worked together on it. Um, I thought it was a great way to sort of break up the main exhibition uh, with monochrome. Um, monochrome um, is a really uh, important part of the show um, and I painted it a month before the show started. <laughs> it was literally in uh, in three weeks during a residency up in, in Connecticut um, and I want to shout out my my model gal. I think she's on here um, but uh, I really wanted to uh, paint a series of, uh, of paintings on uh, trans women or non-binary women um, and really just sort of uh, be able to give a voice um, to, to trans women. Um, so monochrome really felt like an important piece that I really wanted to put out there. And when I originally started working with, with Gal, we were only really looking at doing maybe like one or two, you know, paintings together. And then um, once we started the photo shoot, it really felt like it really needed to be a series and it was a really important message to send. Um, so here, let me go on in. But this is the original way that I wanted monochrome to be hung. So it was really important for y'all to see, you know, all of the all of the the gradients and the primary colors together. And then we can take a look at them all separate. Sorry, I'm still really bad at these controls. I'm just gonna run into the wall until it lets me through. <laughs> All right, awesome. So yeah, so I really wanted to um, create monochrome in a way where it was really focused on primary colors. And the reason why I wanted to use primary colors is uh, really significant to, um, you know, all the colors are made out of red, blue, and yellow. And I believe that, um, you know, our identities are very similar. We can be anyone that we want to be, no matter who we are, no, no matter how we were born. Um, and that really sort of echoes throughout these pieces. Um, and I really wanted to sort of give a voice to that perspective. Um, but yeah, and it, it's just really a, a, was a wonderful experience just working with Gal on these, um, just so powerful. Um, some of my favorites were actually the red series um, with the bra. This one looks a little cut off. But I had um, a funny story about this series is I actually had a pair of uh, breast implants made for, for Gal. And when she wore them, she felt, she said that she felt like she was really sort of coming into that, um, 
that beautiful womanhood, you know, you felt like a whole, whole person. So I thought that was a really beautiful sentiment. All right. Do y'all have any questions? Awesome. Well, that was the whole exhibition. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming on a tour with me. <laughs> I have a few questions that I have hey. been sent also. So do certain colors have a specific meaning for you whenever you use them? Yeah, so um, I, I think that warm colors like red and orange are very powerful um, and uh, just have this sort of essence of, of passion and power to them. Um, I really associate a lot of uh, yellows to be innocent um, colors. Um, greens to me are very bland. <laughs> um, and so like I, I, I try not to use those definitions all the time because I think that colors are very powerful um, when they're mixed together with their right complement um, and have the right harmony to them. Um, like I love neon green and bright neon pink together. Uh, they're some of my favorite colors and I love putting teal with those. Um, you know, so I, I think that I do have some, you know, predisposed like cultural definitions of colors in my head, but I try to not let them um, really hinder me from using them in a way that could be interesting. Awesome. Um, and along those similar lines, what is your favorite piece in the exhibit? Um, my favorite piece, I think it has to be, um, I think it has to be the, the first red monochrome piece, this one. I just, I love everything about it. Um, it's powerful. It's, I, I want to actually paint a bigger painting of it. <laughs> um, I just think it's, it's just, it's so high fashion, it's powerful, it's, it's meaningful. It's just got everything that I love about a painting in it. Um, I think the pose is beautiful. Um, it's, it's funny because when you work with yourself for a year, like as a model and you have this sort of like predisposition of a pose in your head and you're, you just know what you wanna paint. But when you actually work with someone and they tell you their story um, and then they go into this room and they just embody this, this beautiful thing that you weren't expecting. Um, I think that was that moment with, with this photo shoot that it was just so unexpectedly beautiful and um, in, a, in a really meaningful and powerful way. Um, so I think this, this whole collection is probably my favorite, but I think the first, this first bra photo like that we took was probably the, my favorite thing that I painted last year. I love that, it's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I love that this, that all of this happened in December. It was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And Marcel is like, I'm going, I'm, I'm going on a little artist retreat and I'm going to do all of this. And I'm like, okay. And then she gets <laughs> back a few weeks later and it's like, bam. I'm like, oh, <laughs> you've been busy. This is yeah, awesome. it was. It was crazy. It was, um, I was just in a room, uh, a dark room. It was a yellow, like a mustard yellow room with one window uh, and one light. And the light was also yellow. <laughs> it was the most hideous floor lamp ever. Um, <laughs> and I, I could only paint between eight in the morning and three in the afternoon. And then it would get dark. Uh, so <laughs> That's amazing. I yeah. love it. Um, one question that I had going back, departing from here, going back to the first room of the exhibit, will you mm -hmm. speak to your experience in doing so much self-portraiture? Like, what does that meant to you? Um, what do you think that you get out of it? And what do you think comes out in your art with doing that? I think what I get out of it is much more body positivity for me. Um, as someone who struggled like pretty much my whole life and continues to struggle with with the ideal, the ideal body, um, you know, being able to pose for myself and then capture myself and then have other people see the beauty in that is um, extremely uh, amazing. You know, it's it's an amazing feeling because it's not something that you would you would think of like especially if you don't feel good about yourself or good about certain parts of your body. 
Um, I think that, um, you know, I, I challenge myself a lot with being my own model. Like, I don't like wearing my hair up ever. Like, I'm afraid of it showing my double chin. And, <laughs> and in every one of these paintings of myself, I have my hair up. Um, so it's just sort of me forcing myself to see myself differently and to have a different perspective and to not always think of, think of it as a negative and to really sort of find the beauty in it. Um, and I think that it, it sort of impacts my art where um, I'm painting myself in these more powerful poses. Um, I'm choosing these more, um, these poses that I would normally feel uncomfortable with um, and, and really sort of allowing myself to explore that, that different part of me um, and being much more vulnerable with my, my audience and hoping that they will you know, feel that connection with me being as vulnerable as I can be with them. That's awesome. And I feel like you reclaim a lot of power that way. Yeah. In what you're doing. I think that's beautiful. So do we have any other questions? This has been absolutely wonderful. I hope you guys have enjoyed it as much as I have. Thank you so much, Marcella, for talking with us and telling us a little bit more about what you're doing with this really powerful and beautiful exhibition. Thank you um, so much. Do we have any other questions? I don't, I don't have any questions in particular, but I just want to say I really love the exhibit and it is very powerful and I can see you owning your power in the portraiture that you've done um, of yourself and of the other people as well. Mm -hmm. They all own their power. So that's, it's really beautiful work. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. That means a lot to me. Um, Lisa said, it's all so beautiful. I agree, Lisa. I think um, even with the amount of vulnerability that I feel like comes out in your artwork, I feel like beauty is one of the, and maybe partially it's the colors and everything else, but I think beauty is one of the biggest things that pops out at you and seeing these portraits of women and the strong messages behind it and the amount of beauty coming through also. It's really, really strong work, Marcella. And I am so proud that Roaring Artist Gallery got to show this show. I think it's absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much. All right, so if we have, if we don't have any other questions, I'm gonna let Marcella go and all of you, but um, thank you so much for coming to yeah. this artist talk. It has been absolutely wonderful and um, yeah, so we have recorded it as well. So if you want to come back and refer to the things that, that Marcella has said whenever you're going back through the exhibit, again, I know I will be, I've seen it a million times and I keep going back through it because it's, it's awesome. And um, so, yeah, I think we can all look at it with fresh new eyes after this. And I think that's gonna be really exciting also. So thank you so much again, Marcella. This has been amazing. Thank you all for coming and um, Thank you for supporting us at The Roaring Artist and thank you support for supporting Marcella as well and her powerful art. All right. Thanks thank you guys. Thank you so much.